Step 3. Bits as building blocks. So we have seen how to represent, uh, we have seen how that uh, digital signals are more uh, practical than analog signals. The question now is how do we represent these digital signals? So we saw an example of uh, a digital system uh, with the Napoleon semaphore. So let's go back to it and uh, consider it again. In order to send a message, let's say war is over, the arms have to be uh, re re uh, rearranged into these following configurations. For W, we have this one, for A, this one, for R, this one, and so on. So, but what does it take to actually change the state of the semaphore? If you consider going from this one to this one, so A, A to R, then it's not so bad. Because all you have to do is change the state of one of these little, little arms and fold it uh, onto the main arm. So that doesn't require too much effort. However, if your message requires that you follow W by 10, then you have to do quite a lot of uh, 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 reconfiguring of your arms in order to set the semaphore state into a shape that represents 10. So that requires a lot of effort. So a good representation for sending digital signals should require uh, the least amount of effort possible in order to change the state of um, the digital signal. So in this sense, it makes sense to have fewer internal states in order to produce a better uh, encoding for the message. And such an example is the Morse code. With the Morse code, you only have two internal states. You've got a short signal and you've got a long signal. So, for example, if you want to encode a U, the letter U, you have a short signal for the time period T, then you've got no signal for the same amount of time, then again a short signal, then no signal, and then a signal uh, that uh, um, takes uh, three times um, uh, the amount of time as the short signal. So what does it actually look like when we transmit it down the elect electrical wire? It looks something like this. You've got your one over here because the signal is turned off. Then at time t, you switch off the signal. This is the break between the two dots. Then you again switch it on. This is the second dot and you turn it off for time t. And then you switch it on for times 3t. So it's really the presence or absence of a signal that conveys the information. Always when you change from uh, no signal to signal, or you know that uh, the signal is constant, or it continues to be absent, then this carries a small amount of information. And in fact, this amount of information is codified as a bit. And the bit in, in classical uh, computation and in digital communication is the basic unit of information. It conveys the message of something is true or false, something is yes or no, the signal is on or off. But usually how it's represented is with this value. It's either the bit is either zero or one. So we said that uh, digital signals are robust to noise. Let's re-examine how a bit uh, is robust to noise. So let's consider a particular, particular message represented by this uh, time-varying signal. So here, for some time t, we've got the signal on, which represents one, then another one, then the uh, signal is absent, we've got a zero, then we've got another one. So this is a clean signal. As you can see, the, the value of the signal does not change over time. It only goes from a one to a zero and back to one. So when we apply noise, usually in real life situation, what you would get is something that looks like this. You've got this random looking line, and a random looking line there, and another random looking line there. But I think everybody uh, agrees that still we can um, recognize this as the original message of being one, one, zero, one. So in order for the noise to introduce an error, the noise must be very, very strong. This means that uh, uh, digital signals and bits are very robust to this noise. So we, we are only considering two states of a bit, zero and one. That's not very many states. So is, it, uh, a, are, is 
are, are digital bits expressible? Can they express a lot of messages? Can we use them to uh, encode arbitrary messages? Let's see. If we have only one bit, then there are two possible values, 0 or 1. If we have two bits, then we can see that we have four possible values, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. If we have three, the number of possible values increases to eight. And we can go on, so on. So you can probably already see the pattern that for n bits, we can have two to the n possible values. So if we assign a different meaning to each individual values, we can express two to the n possible uh, uh, words or symbols or whatever we agree upon. So let's demonstrate this with numbers. How do we go from decimal notation to binary notation? So let's re-examine how decimal notation works. Let's say we've got a number 1024 in decimal form. So really what this means is that we have, we take a thousand, we add 20 to it, and then we add four, which means that this first digit here on the left signifies the number of thousands in our number. So it's one times a thousand. Then the second digit from the left represents how many hundreds there are. So there are zero hundreds, so we write zero times a hundred, plus two times ten, plus four times one. We can also rewrite the thousand, the hundred, and ten as powers of ten. So we can write one times ten to the three, zero times uh, ten to the two, two times ten to one, and four times ten to zero. That gives us our original number. And for binary, the idea is very similar, but instead of using base 10, we just use base 2. So all the powers are in, of, uh, in terms of base 2. And we only use zeros and ones. So for example, we could have this following number, 1001. So let's see what it actually uh, corresponds to in the decimal notation. So we start on the right, and this one means that we have 1 times 2 to the power of 0. Then we have two zeros, which means that we have uh, no powers of 2 to the 1 and no powers of 2 to the 2. But we have 1 on the left, which means that we have 1 times 2 to the 3, 3. So this number actually means 8 plus 1, which is 9 in decimal. So the advantages of using bits are the following. They're very robust to noise, they're very easy to encode and decode, and they're very easy to process. So, we went uh, from representing messages with many, with analog signals to digital signals, and finally we, we said that we only require two states to represent any signal. Does that mean that bits are the most fundamental carriers of information? And in fact, if you are only considering classical communication, then yeah, it's a fair thing to say that yes, they are. But at the same time, if you want to move into quantum communication, then we would say no, they are not more fundamental and in the most fundamental. And in the next step, we will see what is.